So I've been chasing a little issue with the turbo hard body where it just intermittently doesn't have fuel pressure. It has some fuel pressure, but not high enough. Uh, barely high enough to run NA, especially not high enough to run uh, with boost. So I started with the fuel pressure regulator, think it might be bad. And I actually made a whole video where I replaced the diaphragm on it uh, with a proper aeromotive one. And we I took it out after that, did a little test drive, held pressure just fine. Brought it home, shut it off in the driveway, went to put it back inside, exact same thing again, low fuel pressure, uh, not at all responsive, and yeah, just overall not bad, barely running enough to get back into the garage. So I was like, all right, not a fuel pressure regulator. Just filmed this whole video. I haven't put it together. I don't know. Maybe I'll put some of it together and, and put it on here just in case someone is curious about how to rebuild one of these uh, knockoff fuel pressure regulators. But so today, since that didn't work, we're going to be putting a high flow fuel pump in the Nissan hard body. Uh, I brought, I bought a Walbro 255 and yeah, so I actually already filmed the video. So enjoy. First thing you need to do is pull these three screws so that you can loosen the filler neck from the bed. And it may help to spray those down with penetrating oil. Obviously, if you see rust on any of these bolts, spray it first, save yourself some time. Next, you'll need to get down here. This is the front of the leaf spring. There's a stud and a nut. Right there. That's one. At the back of the truck here, that's two. And just a little further up. That's three. They should come down with washers and nuts. And then you repeat that on the other side. Once you've pulled all your 14 millimeter bolts and your filler neck bolts, you need to disconnect this guy right here. That's all your wiring for the rear end. At this point, once your electrical connections are undone and your bolts and screws are out, the bed is free and ready to be carried away. However, if you are only doing a fuel pump like I'm doing, another option, so rather than lift and remove the entire bed, you can just kind of notch up and lift up this side, tilting the bed up to get to your fuel pump. We're going to give that a go because I've got underglow and I'm hoping to not have to cut and splice that back together when we're done here and then I, maybe I can just tilt the bed up out of the way and get to the pump. So we'll see how that goes. So it's not as pretty as just taking the whole bed off, but if you're by yourself, you're in a pinch and you really need to get in there. I mean, it did work, so it's just going from the bottom of the bed onto that cross member with these blocks. And um, we can see the fuel pump, and I think we'll have enough clearance up there, and if not, I'm probably just going to stack another board in there. So next up is clean this all up in here. Okay, so I went ahead and rolled this thing outside, lifted the bed back up, and then actually hosed down a lot of the inside here. And now I'm just working on pulling those lines off. I'll pull the electrical, and then I'm going to take a wire brush all the way around that edge, and then really, really spray all that gunk out from around the rim uh, with some brake spray or carburetor cleaner, whatever. And then we'll pull the pump out and change out the pump. Okay, so here's the assembly out. Um, this whole cable just disconnects for the wiring on this guy. Fuel lines off, this out, and little strainer uh, that goes on the bottom here. It was actually floating around in the tank, so we went ahead and fished that out as well. Um, so, we're going to be replacing the pump portion right here, top of this green guy, with this guy, which is, in fact, Walbro. But this is the actual company that makes the parts, and they're just kind of rebranding them nowadays, apparently. So, this is a Walbro 255, and it should fit in there, and if it doesn't fit in there snugly, we may just kind of modify the housing a little bit. Some people will go ahead and just get rid of this housing piece altogether and just kind of strap it down here. 
Um, so we'll see how we go on that. I also went ahead and bought the kit that they recommend to go with it. So it's got this sleeve, which I don't know that we'll use. Came with a new strainer. That's handy. Came with a new bit of hose. That's handy. Importantly, came with the wiring, because I really didn't want to do sketchy wiring on this guy. So it came with that. Um, clamps. That's the piece that it sits on at the bottom. And just some current connectors. So I guess I'm going to dig into this, take it apart, and see how we fit this new one in there. And um, I'll get back to you when I have a plan. Okay, so here's what I figured out. Wellbro pump fits into this guy if you just take a file and you file down those fins just a little bit. So file all those down, new pump slides right in there. So that's cool, that's good. Um, also realized that at least on a 96, this clip fits straight into the clip on the wall, bro. I guess because it's a, a um, universal, um, it clips right in there. So there's very little need for me to have this at all. I really thought I was gonna have more issues because the strainer, the old strainer's not that bad. The old hose is honestly just fine, so plenty flexible. Um, the wiring plugs were straight in, and this will go straight into this, it will go into this housing with, you know, just minor modifications. So, can't say that I really recommend buying this. Uh, at this point, I'm not sure if I'm going to bother using that piece of fuel line or this strainer, or, you know, any of this stuff, because all of the stuff on this old sending unit is just fine. And it literally is pretty much going to fall into place. So, there you go. You can learn from my quote mistake on this one. So, I guess I'm going to decide what I want to do, get it all put back together, and then it'll be time to put it back in the truck. Okay, so here's what I've decided to go with. Obviously, Walbro with the stock clip on the Walbro, the universal clip on the Walbro, stock clip from the pump. This is the stock hose, and I didn't even have to trim it. That's the same length that it was. Fits right on there, fits right on there, perfect. I went ahead and used the new strainer simply because the old strainer is, um, well, it's a little bit dirty and this is especially kind of worn out, doesn't stay on there. Plus, I have heard that if you run a new Walbro and you don't run a new filter, if you do have issues with it, they're not going to warranty it if you're running the old one. So, it does make sense to go ahead and slap that guy on there. Um, yeah, other than that, like I said, shaved out the inside of this. It fits on, clips back on there just fine. And yeah, this thing's ready to go back in the truck and should be all good. Okay, at this point, the new assembly with the new pump is in the truck and the bed is back down. So now we're gonna go ahead and cycle the key and let it build up some pressure and just check that initial pressure on the gauge just to make sure that it's not through the roof high with the new pump. And then we'll maybe make a base adjustment based off of just cycling the key on. Uh, then we'll go ahead and fire it up and reset fuel pressure with this new pump. And hopefully we're you know, having solid pressure and enough of it that I'm confident enough to maybe even change out the wastegate spring to something a little bit more uh, heavy. So we'll uh, cycle the key and we'll see what happens.
We've got about 55 pounds of fuel pressure, and the AFR gauge is sitting at about a 12 here at idle. So that's not bad, especially for a cold start. Um, I'm happy to try that for at least a little bit here. So overall, pretty happy with that. So as best I can tell, the new pump has fixed the hard body. I haven't had a chance to take it out for another test hit yet, um, but I'm pretty confident just with how much fuel pressure it had right off the bat. Definitely has more than stock. You know, I can't imagine that it would have any more issues with low fuel pressure now that it's got the Walbro in it. So super excited about how that, how easy that was to put in. Uh, highly recommend it. If you're going to put a new fuel pump in here, go with this one. I'll have the, the part numbers and everything I bought it from Summit. Super easy to put in there. Super, super nice. Super nice. So we'll go ahead and take it out for a test drive another day because I don't have the bed bolted all the way in right now and it's late and the truck's loud. So I won't do that today, but I'm thinking what I might do is I might make another short video where I actually take the five pound spring out and put an eight pound spring in since we do have that extra fuel pressure now. I think it can probably handle that no problem. So anyway, thanks for watching. I hope this was useful for you. Hope you enjoyed it. Uh, stick around, come back for more hard body content. See you later.